To have a mom You're not next to me I'd rather go hungry And wither away Than to eat like a king Self every day. I'd rather not be in a crowded room. If I can't be there. In the pouring rain Then to walk in the sun And not see your face Rather not dance To an old field too If I know I can't dance with you If I knew you'd never be by my side I'd rather sleep in a box Lord in the street To have a mom You're not next to me Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Here we go. It is that time again. Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious Manchester, New Hampshire, here on Canal Street. Uh, today is Saturday, June 13, 2024. Uh, we have a very, very busy show uh, for you today. We opened, of course, with uh, the brand new single from Hope the Rapper. That one is called Heavenly Father, as we are in week five of our 10 world radio premieres of new singles from Hope the Rapper. Uh, 10 weeks of world radio premieres, and uh, that is the uh, the fifth one in the series. That is Heavenly Father by our friend Hope the Rapper. Really, really great stuff. And the track that we heard after that is called If I Can't Be With You, and that is by Mr. Cameron Sutphin, who is here with us on this uh, this very humid <laughs> Saturday morning. Welcome, Cameron. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, great to have you here, and I'm looking forward to hearing you play. You did bring your guitar, and by the way, uh, so congratulations uh, are in order, I believe. You're about to get married? Yes, I'm getting married. Um, so we're less than a week. So I'm getting married next Friday. Oh, very good. Yeah, I saw I saw your Facebook post. This is your last uh, public performance before the wedding? Um, so I'm doing the Sandown um, Summer Concert Series oh. on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Because my fiance and I are both working right up until the wedding. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. So. Well, uh, I'm dying to hear you play something if you want to. Uh... Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the first track on the uh, album. Uh, it was put out last month, and uh, it's called John Henry. This was my attempt at writing a John Henry song because <laughs> being a folk singer, I wanted one because everyone else has one. All right. <laughs> John Henry was a steel driving man. John Henry was a steel driving man. He never worked for coal cause they tortured the land. John Henry was a steel driving man. The mountains are being torn down. The mountains are being torn down Faster than John Henry ever swung his hand around The mountains are being torn down There's dirty water in the streams There's 
dirty water in the streams That ain't good for man But they only care about machines There's dirty water in the streams John Henry beat the steam drill With only a hammer in his hand But it'll take more than that To rid coal from this land The air in the mountains ain't clean The air in the mountains ain't clean and you can't beat a steam drill if you can't breathe. The air in the mountains ain't clean. John Henry was a steel driving man. John Henry was a steel driving man. He never worked for coal cause they tortured the land. John Henry was a steel driving man. John Henry was a steel driving man. Oh, I love it. I love it. Cameron Sutphin is with us live in studio here. And uh, uh, you sound great. Your voice is unique. I can't think of... Um, I can't think of anyone who sounds quite like you. Do you get compared to anybody that I'm maybe not uh, thinking of? Sometimes Bob Dylan, because I like I like Bob Dylan, and I also um, I'm a big Neil Young fan. Okay, but I don't have as high of a voice as Neil Young does. Yeah, no, that's so. that, that's true. Yeah, are those um, are those guys big influences of yours? Oh yeah, yeah. I got into um, I got into Bob Dylan when I was a teenager. So my first Bob Dylan record, because uh, I'm in my 30s, was Modern Times from yeah. the 2000s. And then I had to go backwards. Oh, okay. And and you know figure out that there was the Free Will and Bob Dylan, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Blonde on Blonde and Nashville Skyline and all the other ones. Did um, did going back and listening to those earlier releases did that kind of change? Like, did you did you appreciate those more because you know artists who've been around for you know decades like Bob Dylan who've had that kind of a career? You know, everybody always says, "Oh, I like the earlier stuff better." But I'm curious if from your perspective, because you you really discovered him late in his career. I'm yeah. curious if, if if you feel that same way or oh, no. I mean, I, I I like the early stuff. It's, you know, I think I think most everything Bob Dylan does is genius. But I remember going, I saw Bob Dylan many years ago uh, with my family in uh, Amherst, Massachusetts. And um, I was sitting next to, so I went with my mom and my dad and my brother. And I was sitting next to my mom. And um, he started playing stuff from Modern Times on up to Temptus, which was the latest record at that point. And my mom looks at me and goes, how do you know these songs? And I said, because he's not doing anything from the 70s. I think at the end he did Tangled Up in Blue, and my mom was like, oh, okay, I know that one. You yeah, know, I know, yeah. I know. Um, I've, I've heard that he, he'll do that. Like, he'll kind of, uh, he doesn't necessarily want to load up his set with a lot of the earlier material, which is interesting because... There were probably people, I mean, they might not have shown it, but there were probably people in that audience who were actually not pleased that he wasn't leaning more on the earlier stuff. You know what I mean? There like, were, behind us, where the band Dawes was opening for him. So there were some, there was a couple uh, guys there who I thought were older. They were probably uh, my age or mid-20s. Yeah. Um, I was a teenager. I was at the time. And um, they were there for Dawes and for the, modern times up so there was about about half and half of the crowd yeah. was younger than half was was you know wanted the uh, you know 70s 80s material right right oh that's interesting um and tell us about this album so you sent me now this is your debut album not your debut release because you have an ep that you had yeah. put out previously but the song that we played uh at the top of the show and we're gonna play another one of course later uh but uh, these are from your uh 13 track full full length album Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. It's a ten track, and uh, yeah, oh, it's I made 10. It, okay. Yep. I made it in a Rocking Horse studio in um, Pittsfield, um, New Hampshire. I'm bad at math. Rocking Horse. That's a name that comes up a lot on the show. Yep. They're really great. And then I, um, so I went there and recorded with my guitar, and then I outsourced because I know some musicians in Nashville. I used to live in Nashville, Tennessee, and oh. so I, 
So I had um, the bass player, the upright bass player was from upstate New York, and he comes down to Rocking Horse once a month and does a whole bunch of sessions. Oh, no kidding. And then the steel player was from Nashville. Uh, the fiddle player, Amy Alvey, um, now lives in Nashville, but she um, used to live in Boston. She's in a bluegrass duo called Golden Shoals, and I met her on a tour called the Massachusetts Walking Tour many years ago. Yeah. And then I had um, my friend Kat Kennedy sing on a couple tracks, and she's out in L.A. And then my um, my friend Mary Hastings, who's um, out of Concord, New Hampshire, where I um, am technically out of until August 1st, but yeah. uh, after the wedding I won't be there anymore. Um, she sang backing vocals in Rocking Horse. So it, okay. So, and uh, we used to play in a duo called New Leaves, and we stopped that duo last year because Mary went back to school full time. <laughs> is that who I'm hearing? Because because uh, there's a couple of songs where I, yeah, I hear this female yep. backing vocal that it's just beautiful. Thank or you. or actually on um, what track is it? Oh, I think it's Mansion on the Hill. Yeah, that's she. She sings with you, and yes. and you sound amazing together. Thank you. Yep. So so yeah, and that's um, that song I wrote in. Um, that's the only song I play that I wrote in college. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> the because when you go to Nashville, uh, about your first writers round, you realize you have to throw all your material. You go, oh shoot, that's not good. You know, I have to. Yeah. Start over. But, what is uh, that? A writers round for people who don't know. Um, it's where you play. Um, you get up with with. Um, it's you and two or three other writers. Yeah. And, and you play um, th- three to four songs, and you just go around. So you yep. just go right down the line. Is that unique to Nashville, do you know? Or do they, I, I don't know, maybe, I, I think maybe I've heard of that happening in New York too, but it seems yeah. like it's kind of an unusual thing, it right? It started in Nashville. There's a couple places that do it. Um, in, um, there was a place prior to 2020 called the Open Door Cafe, and I played there. That was in near like Hillsborough, New Hampshire. They oh. moved locations. So they played basement of an old church that played on a farm, and they would have one feature that would get 45 minutes, and then they would have a couple rounds of people. Okay. Um, so yeah, people have you know taken that, but that was a Nashville model that moved its way up to New York. And okay, is that intimidating the first time you do that? Because I mean, you're in Nashville, you know, you're you're among the, some some heavy hitters. Is that nerve wracking or? It it was. I think the second time. Oh no no that's, no the first time I did it I did it it was called the Commodore Hotel, and the feature I didn't know who the feature was and I was going. After the feature, I was in the last round of the night because I was new. Yeah. And the feature gets up and uh, he says, this song is a song that I wrote and it's uh, currently in the top 30 on the country charts. He <laughs> plays it and they goes, this song was a top 20 two years ago. And I went, can I <laughs> not like... Why couldn't you put me on earlier? I don't want to follow that. Like, this guy's got hits. He has hits. Yeah. And then, so he played like three or four hits. And then he's like, this is a new song. And I went, thank goodness. <laughs> that's intimidating. I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, I'm dying to hear you play another one. If you're just joining us, we have Cameron Sutfin here with us live in studio. By the way, is this the earliest in the day you've ever uh, played live? Um, Anywhere? I or? did. Uh, when I moved back to, um, when I moved back to, um, New England in 2019. Um, I think I did a radio interview near Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I believe that one was 7:30 or 8 in the morning. Oh, okay, yeah. So that that I think that was the earliest yeah. I've ever uh, I've ever played. Yeah, yeah. Or it's not so much the playing, right? It's the singing that's the yeah. challenge. At I can I can early in the morning. <laughs> you sound great though. Thank you. I've had my coffee. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can wake up and play guitar, you know, yeah, <laughs> at yeah. any time in the morning. Uh, so we'll do this one's called Without Her. All right. Every sunrise and set Every chord that I fret It doesn't matter, it's all a waste Without her Every line that I write Doesn't matter on a lonesome night They're all throwaways without her When I walk down the street There's no one beside me I'm alone in a crowd without her 
When I turn out my lights There's no one to hold me through the night When I get up in the morn I'm there all alone And when I dream There's only darkness it seems I can't see the light without her When I go to the bar It doesn't feel right at all Cause I try to forget I'm without her When I lay my head to rest All I feel is emptiness When I get up with the sun Nothing matters Now that she's gone Every sunrise and set Every chord that I fret It doesn't matter, it's all a waste without her When I lay down to sleep And the Lord calls me Will I still be without her? Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love it. If you're just joining us, Cameron Sutphin is here with us live in studio on this Saturday morning. It is, of course, uh, Saturday, July 13, 2024. And um, are you playing out a lot? Do you play a lot of shows? Yeah. So so um, I'm lucky. So this is my full-time job. And uh, so like this afternoon and sometimes mornings, a little later in this, about 1030, um, I, play, I play nursing homes. And that's my quote-unquote day job. Yeah. And then I play... Um, a lot of folk venues, a lot of coffee houses and library lawn concerts. I've got a couple of those coming up in August. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, farmer's markets, really any community event type thing yeah. uh, where they want, you know, classic country and folk music. Yeah, yeah. Um, how long were you in Nashville when you lived uh, down there? Three years. Three years, yeah. Three years. What, what brought you back? Uh, there was no, I wasn't making any money. Yeah, it's um, tough, right? Because it's... Uh, you know, you're surrounded by all this great talent, but you're surrounded by all this great talent. It's kind of a double-edged sword in Nashville, right? Yeah, and so my roommate was a guy who played on um, the EP that I made named Ashton Lee, and he taught me a lot. Um, and uh, he moved out to uh, Colorado. Yeah. Um, and then the following year, I moved back up to New Hampshire. You know, I moved back to New England. I'm from Connecticut originally. Oh, okay. Okay. And, um, yeah. Um, because, you know, it, it's a... Um, it's a hard scene. The rent is insanely expensive because Nashville's it's a booming mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a lot better in New England than <laughs> yeah, I ever did yeah. in Nashville, so I'm quite happy here. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But I bet you wouldn't trade the experience, right? Because I'm sure you learned a ton. Oh, I learned a ton. I got to make an out. You know, I got to make a three-song CD down there, and that was really nice. And I learned how to go into a studio. Yeah. So the second time I did it here, I wasn't as uh, intimidated because I knew what I was getting into. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Did you have mentors in Nashville? Did you have people who kind of took you under their wing? I mean, the, the main guy, and I just met him uh, because I needed, you know, I needed a roommate, was my roommate Ashton Lee. And um, he he's my age, and he went to school for music, and he knew way more than I did. Yeah. And he really helped me. And then I had this woman I met at a writer's round um, who was... Um, who was you know, significantly older than me and had been writing in Nashville for about, I think at the time, seven years, and her name was Deb Zeems. Mm -hmm. And she helped me um, learn how to like lay a song out on a page yeah. and how to write, and we did a couple of co-writes, um, and that really helped. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, how, how did you get into playing at nursing homes? Um, so I started playing in a church folk group, um, 
it was Holy Family Church at the time in Enfield, Connecticut, my hometown. And there were three nursing homes in the town, and every Christmas, um, one of the guitar players with the Lions Club would have us go play. And I asked somebody, I said, hey, could I just play here? Because I was like 13 and one at any gig. And yeah. they said, yeah, you can play. And then I found out that they pay you for it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, it's, it doesn't just have to be volunteers. They're like, yeah, we'll give you some money. Yeah. And it just, you know, and then I started calling more up. And, yeah. and then I figured out, well, I can go make a living at it and, you know, not have to get, quote, unquote, a real job. Yeah, that's fantastic. And just go play um, a bunch of shows. And then at night you can do all the folk-type venues. And yep. That's fantastic. There's a yeah. lot of musicians. There's a guy I met um, playing the uh, Big E. I played there a couple of years at Connecticut Building, a guy named Sean Taylor, who's out of Connecticut. And um, we were playing, you know, late afternoon, and he, and we discovered we did the same oh. thing. We were doing the same thing. Of, no kidding. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, I was doing that the other day, and now I'm here, you know, doing, yeah. you know, 12 to 2, and I was doing 2 to 4 after him. And yeah. Oh, wow. We Very cool. We discovered we did the same type of thing. That's awesome. Uh, you want to play another one? Yeah, we'll do one off of the um, we'll do one off the Nashville one. Oh, cool! Okay. This 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 one. So this song called Drive, and I put this out. So seven years ago, this uh, the uh, Nashville um, EP came out called Heartbreak Town, and it was my fiance's suggestion. I'll give Millicent all the credit for this. Um, she heard the songs, and I told her that I was going to put out this new ten track, and she said, "Well, be a shame if you know, because they had like no streams." Oh, yeah. And she said, well, you know, it'd be a shame if, if, you know, they're good songs, you do something with one of them. And so um, she said, she, you know, you should make a video. And so I made a lyric video to this song, Drive, and um, I had someone in L.A. Uh, make it, you know, for me. And it was um, lyrics and uh, tour pictures of all the tours I'd done with friends oh. and camping. We camped all across the country with a couple friends. Yeah. And um, it got, uh, now has 11,000 views on YouTube, which is my wow. first, my first uh, first video to have over 10,000 views. So Excellent. I was quite grateful to, to uh, Millicent, my fiance, for making that suggestion because yes. it worked. Um, so yeah, it's called Drive. It's about driving around the country. I've been to uh, now 32 states in D.C. No kidding. Um, wow. The only one I flew to was California. Yeah. <laughs> and that was last year to go to a music festival with my brother. So we, we both flew in and then flew out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I didn't. Someone was like, oh, you're going to drive? I said, no. <laughs> that, that's a hike. <laughs> that's a hike. That's a hike. Although I was playing the uh, Merrimack um, Public Library a few years ago, and I played this song, and this woman uh, bought the CD, and she said she was doing a cross-country trip, and she was going to listen to it the entire time. And I said, well, it's only three minutes, so that might... <laughs> Might want to throw in other songs. Right, right. That's going to be a Fix it that's going to be bit. on repeat for a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I think she was going to either Nevada or Arizona. She said she was driving out. Oh, okay. So it's called Drive. Here All we go. Right. Drive and drive. Don't you ever sleep Counting down the exit signs Like promises you can't keep Like promises you can't keep Drive and drive Watch the night turn into day As long as you keep moving You won't feel the pain No, you won't feel the pain Further along, there's a new place to go You burn through your life, watch it go up in smoke But there's always a new road So you just drive and drive and drive Drive in round that New York City town Like a desperado yo Never settle down, you'll never settle down. You sing your songs, pick your guitar, burn both ends of the candle like you don't care if you fall, like you don't care if you fall. 
Further along, there's a new place to go. You burn through your life, watch it go up in smoke. But there's always a new road, so you just drive and drive and drive. Sleep counting down the exit signs Like promises you can't keep Like promises you can't keep Like promises you can't keep Yeah, I like it. Thank you. I like it. Cameron Sutphin is here with us live in studio here and uh, sounding uh, sounding great. And yeah, I, I can see where... Um, I can see where someone that, that is a, a I can see where someone would think that that was a good driving song. I can I can I can kind of picture it. But like you said, you know, not necessarily listening to it over and over and over. But <laughs> that's I, I didn't even want to calculate all the times you have to repeat to get from here to, to the Midwest. Now, how did you um how did you uh, wind up working with um, Rocking Horse? Like I said, that's a name that comes up a lot on the show and, and uh, a very popular studio. How did you connect? It's Brian, right? Is yes, it Brian? Brian. Yes, Brian. Brian. Uh, I forget his last name now. I know him too, and I'm blanking on. I know a lot of Brian's. I'm, I'm blanking on too. It's on the back of the album. That's but, all right, Brian from Rocky Horse. Yeah. How, how did you uh, connect with him? I I ended up you know googling studios in uh, in New Hampshire, and it's about 20 minutes from where I live, and um, they had you know samples on their website. And when I was making it, um, I was playing uh, with Mary Hastings when when we were playing with the duo. Uh, we were playing Market Days, and the guys running sound were in this band called uh, Club Soda. And they, um, their female singer was having a hip surgery. And they said to Mary, they said, we're doing this gig in um, Maine. Can you fill in on a couple of songs? And then they said to me, oh, could you play two on oh. some songs? And we were in front of those 21 outside. It was, I think it was, uh, they said, just under 1,000 people, which is really nice of them. And as we're getting set up and sound checking, um, I mentioned I was making an album, and they said, oh, where? And I said, Rocking Horse. They said, oh, my gosh, we've been there. They're great, and they yeah. really are great guys. Um, so I didn't know you know, the reputation. I just heard the tracks they were doing, and yeah. they said, oh, this sounds great. I'll go there. Oh, it's Coombs, right? Brian Coombs. Yes, Brian yeah, Coombs. Yeah. I knew it would come to me eventually. Yeah. They yeah. were great. They were great. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I've been to that studio. It's, it's very impressive. Um, are you going to uh, – now, do you have more – I don't know. How long has this album been out? Is this relatively June new? June 4th. June 4th. Oh, so this is out. brand new. It's okay. brand new. Yep, June 4th okay. came out. So you're probably not even thinking about the next one yet. Or maybe you are. I don't know. I've got, um, I've got, I've got a handful of songs. Do you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that I could, you know, that I could uh, put out. You probably, you strike me as someone who probably writes a lot. Do you write a lot of songs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wrote, um, last month I wrote two. And so I don't have those memorized yet because I'm promoting a new album. Yeah. You know, I said, well... I've got these two. I've got, you know, um, like, well, I got those two. I got three over here. I said, okay, that's half a record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're working with Brian, uh, because a, a lot of people have ex uh, described this experience to me, does he become, I mean, obviously he's, you know, he's engineering, he's recording you, but does he also become sort of a de facto producer? Because I know he's got a lot of ideas. He does. Yeah, he does. And that was really um, apparent when, um, um, so I did, my guitar and vocals, and then I went in, I redid some vocals, a couple of tracks, and then when um, when uh, Mary Hastings was in the studio, she sings on four of the tracks, and um, yeah, he was very much, you know, saying, try this here and try that there, and yep. and then he, you know, cut it together, and okay, you know, that sounds good over here, and we'll move it around, and yeah, yeah, you know, then we've got, you know, a good track. Doesn't surprise me. He's known for being kind of a wizard. He can, you know, he's, he's got a lot of ideas. And can really, oh, yeah, uh, he's... Very, very creative guy himself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you want to play another one? Yeah, we'll do. This is um, this is one of. So I had a, a friend of mine 
um, suggests. So there's, when I told him I was making a record, and uh, he, I told him I was having you know, backing vocals and fiddle, and he said, you should probably have one or two tracks because I play solo so much. Uh. That are sparse, and so this one's Foolish Game, so this is one of the two. Where oh, I, had... I have to tell you, this is one of my favorites. Thank you. I was listening to the whole thing last night. This oh, is one thanks, of my... I appreciate this is, that. This is one of my favorites. This one, this one really, really kind of hit me in a, in a certain way, yeah. Thanks. I wrote it about um, um, sort of running away from relationships. Yeah. That's when I was much younger. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I was much younger. <laughs> and, uh, you know... 20-year-old me was not smart. <laughs> a 20-year-old anybody isn't smart. <laughs> Don't feel bad. <laughs> All right, Cameron Sutphin, live. I hate to see a friend flying toward the sun only to get burned in the end. You're a sturdy soul Just like a chain But there ain't no shame In lying in the bed you made Can you fight the urge to run? Would you make it further if you stayed? Can you lie by my side? For one more day Where'd you learn that love's a foolish game? Maybe you're right I put my heart on a shelf So high No one can tear it down Cause I remember A lie I was told Time will ease your pain and light in your load Can you fight the urge to run? Would you make it further if you stayed? Can you lie by my side for one more day? Where'd you learn that love's a foolish game? You hear the sound of a slamming door And you know you've heard it in your past before Will you shoot me down like a cannonball? Will I see your face when the night turns to dawn? Can you fight the urge to run? Would you make it further if you stayed? Can you lie by my side for one more day? Where'd you learn that love's a foolish game? Where'd you learn that love's a foolish game? Where'd you learn that love's a foolish game? Very nice. Cameron Sutphin, live in studio with us this morning. Yeah, I, I really like that song Oh, a thanks. Lot. I yeah, appreciate yeah. that a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we should, uh, for those just joining us too, we should plug. So you've got you've got one more live show before the wedding. Yep, that's the um, Sandown Concert Series uh, next Tuesday, and that's in Sandown, New Hampshire. Now, what do, um, now, Sandown, that is, is that near Keene? That's, that's, um, yeah. It's, okay. Um, someone was posting on a, a Facebook forum that they wanted musicians for this concert series. Yeah. And um, I messaged, you know, I just sent a private message to the uh, people booking it and um, with, you know, a track from the album and just my name and my bio. And they said, yeah, you know, every Tuesday and gave me a list of availability. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So th is that something they do throughout the summer? Every yeah, Tuesday um, throughout yeah, the summer? Yeah, that's, so they have the, um, so it's on Tuesdays and they have a farmer's market on Tuesdays with a musician and then that, shuts down and then they have their concert series at night. Oh, very so cool. Concert series. Awesome. Awesome. And I'd never heard of it before till this year. And I was, um, I can't wait to play it. It's Excellent. By the way, I can confirm a new fan for you. Uh, hope the rapper, 
uh, who, of course, we uh, we opened the, uh, today's show uh, with his brand new single, Heavenly Father, because we're doing uh, 10 weeks of New Hope, the rapper singles, world radio premieres. And he messaged me and was complimenting you. Oh, uh, thank you. I said, appreciate that. Says you thank sound you. really good. So. Appreciate it. And if you missed uh, Heavenly Father, the new single from Hope the Rapper, we'll uh, we'll play that again uh, in a bit on the show as well. So, uh, but try to hit that. I try to hit that every hour with the new uh, with the world radio premieres here on uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed. Have these um, studio tracks? Have these been played on the radio before? Um, so um, uh, some of them have. Yeah. So I was on the show um, just before the album came out. Uh, called the folk revival that's out of worcester okay so yep that's a nick noble's show so yep he uh, he played a couple of them i'll have to look that up that's not a show that i'm familiar with but that's that's on in worcester the, yeah that's out of worcester yep. okay okay interesting all right yeah. very cool very cool by the way so when you play out do you ever um is it always just you solo or do you ever have other musicians join you it's it's pretty much um now it's always me solo so i played in um, a duo with um my friend mary hastings I also played in duo with my friend uh, mary DeProto. Uh, that that's many more years ago. Um, I do have a, a, a the bass player um, actually at um, St. John Jugon Church uh, the, in the folk group. Um, he told me to message him the tracks, and he said, "If you're ever playing locally, I'll play." So we might do oh. something, uh, you know, after after I'm married, um, yeah. and I'll have him backing me. Um, but he doesn't want to travel too far. He's like just oh. local Connecticut, you know. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, but it's mainly me. Um, one of my favorite singer-songwriters, Guy Clark, who uh, said, you know, you can make a living if you can play solo because mm-hmm. there's very little overhead. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so it's, yeah, it's mainly been just me. But, um, you know, that might change. I might have a, you know, backing musician or two. Sure, sure. Uh, come along with me. But there, is, there are advantages, of course, you know, practically and logistically to being a, a solo act. I, you know, I myself, I'm a musician, but I've only ever played in bands. So I know that, you know, with bands, it's always there's the, the challenges of working around even just for rehearsals, you know, working around everyone's schedules. And then when you're trying to book shows, OK, you got to find out, is everybody available to do it and this and that. So when it's just you and a guitar, you know, you can, you know, I know in, um, that, that part's pretty easy in, Na- <laughs> in Nashville because there's, you know, so many bands. And so my um, so I'll, I'll give the example of my, my roommate, Ashton Lee. So when he would book a show with his band. He had a, a guitar player, bass drummer, he pl- and he would sing and play guitar as well. And if the drummer couldn't make it because, oh, I've got another gig, yeah, he'd start calling around, and then he'd send the, the new drummer for that night, the set list. No kidding. And go, here, you know, here's, here's the covers, here's the originals, listen to the track, be ready to go. Wow. And you're expected to just go. No kidding. Same thing for bass player, guitar. Yeah. You know, here's the charts. Here's the covers. Here's the originals. Listen to them, and this is the set list for the two or three hour show. I'll be damned. No kidding. Wow. I suppose if there's a city where you know you could you can pull that kind of system off, it's Nashville, right? I mean, maybe they do it that other places too. But wow, they found a. They were playing tourist spot uh, Lower Broadway, um, and they had got done. And then this guy from a different honky tonk runs over. He says, "Can you guys come play another three hours?" Because our band just, the band there just, they can't make it, something happened. Yeah. And I said, well, we can, but our bass player can't. He's got to go play over there. So they ran around, found a bass player, and went, here's the set. Wow. And they removed the originals because the bass player had never heard. So they just said, here's the set, and we'll do substitute these covers. Can you do it? And he said, think so. (laughs) That's wild. That's incredible to me. And they did another three hours, and... uh, he said, yeah, he said it went okay. Bass player knew 90% of, you know, it's the same country covers. So he yeah. said he knew 90% of the set. And there might have been one song where he's like, oh, I don't know that one. They just tell him what key it's in. Yeah. Okay, it's this key feels like that. And the drummer counts it off and away they go. That's amazing. But so you've really got to have your chops, though, in, in that kind of a, a, a situation, right? Because if you're in a, a scenario, or if a scenario might arise, I should say, where you're going to be called upon to, you know, you got to either know these songs or you got to learn them really fast. Like you've, you've really got to be on your game. Oh yeah. I've seen, I, you know, I primarily went down there to song, write, So I was yeah. not, you know, I was not playing in, you know, um, a ton of bands and doing yeah. lower Broadway uh, much at all. But, you know, I went down there to do the writer's rounds and try to song, write. But yes, the session players there are incredible, mm-hmm. um, as to, as to what they can do on the fly. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's I mean, remarkable. If you, if you want a guitar solo, you say, well, there's a guitar solo right there. They'll play you three guitar solos and go, okay, pick one. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be in one take. One, two, three. Okay, pick one. Yep, yep. Oh, that's amazing. And it's on to the next, on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. They're all so fast. That's amazing. Do you want to, um, you want to play one more live one? Yeah, we'll do... Yeah, let's see which one we can do here. We'll do. Um, and if you're just joining us, Cameron Sutphin is here with us live in studio. Sounding amazing. Get the guitar tuned first. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the album, by the way? Uh, it's called Part of Me. Part of Me. Any but, any uh, any story behind the title? Um, so that's the um, that's the title track, and I I I, I just um, I named it that because I felt the album was pretty personal. Yeah. We'll do. Um, so I said I play nursing homes. That's my day job. Yeah. So this song, uh, this is the only uh, pandemic song on the record, I promise. Okay. <laughs> I didn't overload it. Um, I know we're four years out. But this song came um, from, I was visiting a, a particular sister living in Kennebunk, Maine in 2020. They let me inside, which was incredible. Mm. And um, this woman after the show, and by came up to me, I meant, 18 feet away because the staff wouldn't let anyone go near anybody. Yeah, yeah. And she said, you know, I understand that um, there's this virus out there, but but I'm in my 80s, and I just want to see my family, and I don't care because, honestly, how long do I have to live? And there's no end to this. Mm. And I went home that night thinking about it, and I wrote this song from her perspective and everyone there because there, there, there was absolutely no end in sight. And in um, 2021, when everything starts to open up, those nursing homes were dead last to open up. Yep. Oh, yeah. And people didn't. They're like, it's back to normal. I'm like, but there's, yeah. there's this one population yep. that they won't let do much still. Yep. Yeah. And even in, um, gosh, it was just last year, some of them said no more masking in nursing homes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they were, were pretty... Yeah, they waited. <laughs> they waited for a long time. Yeah. And navigating that, and I knew a lot of people that were working in, you know, in those places that ended up, uh, you know, moving on to other jobs. Cause, yeah. And that was, never mind the residents living, that was just the employees that just said, I've had enough with healthcare. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. I've got a new career. Yeah. So this is my, you know, this is the last time you'll be seeing me. I knew a lot of activities directors that just... Was was that stressful for you? By the way, I didn't because until you brought this up, it didn't even occur to me. Like during the, you know, at the height of the pandemic, playing these nursing homes because in a lot of these nursing homes, like you know, once once COVID got in there, it just you know obviously it spread like wildfire because that's the most vulnerable among us. You know, eighty year old yeah. people. So the first show um, was I'll, I'll remember the day for it was April twenty ninth was the first show back and we did something outside in yeah. Vermont. Um, so those started happening, and then I did a ton of shows over Zoom, and I pre-recorded stuff, and then oh, um, okay, and then Mary, um, my my friend and I, we um, we made because um, we couldn't do Christmas shows, so we made Christmas DVDs. Yeah, and I paid my rent in Christmas DVD sales, and I would so wow. we recorded, burned them, and I'd go down to the post office every day of five or ten of them stacked, going to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Nashville. I'd one in Wyoming that didn't have the technology, but wanted one, you know, to do yeah. a virtual show. And so I paid my rent that December in DVD sales. Interesting. Yeah. So I made it work. Yes. Yes. It was scary for a bit, but then it, you know, um, the, uh, you know, the zoom shows came out and, and it was okay. Yeah. And then, you know, it was, well, okay, I can, I can pay all my bills. And, you know, if this is the way they want it forever, I can pay my bills. Yeah. And yeah. Once the public shows, you know, open up more, you know, I'll do those. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so it's called From a Distance. From a distance, that's how it's been for six months now. Knows when this ends Can't hold my son Or my grandkids All I get is A window visit They told me if I hug them 
I might get sick and die But right now I give my life To hold them one more time Don't know how I'm Gonna make it through This is lonesome Like I never knew They can't tell me When I can kiss my son They just tell me To be strong But it gets lonelier every day I don't see anyone's face I don't mind risking my life To hold my family one more time From a distance, that's how it's been For a year now, who knows when this ends Can't hold my son or my grandkids How am I supposed to live like this? Very nice. Cameron Sotfin live in studio with us. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, uh, Cameron, before we run out of time, please let everyone know uh, how they can find you online, where's the best uh, places to go to keep up with everything that you're doing, get your music, check out your live dates. Yep, so it's uh, Cameron Sotfin Music on Facebook and Instagram. And the uh, dates are posted, the July dates are posted there. We'll have the August dates up soon. And uh, then Cameron Sotfin on Spotify. And, uh, or iTunes. And uh, for the uh, spelling impaired, of course, uh, S-U-T-F. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> That's okay. I'm spelling impaired. S-U-T-P-H-I-N, correct? Yep. Okay. And then <laughs> once you have that, you type that into Google, you can find everything about me. Yes, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's not a, not a particularly common last name. So No, once once you have that spelling down, that's it. It's it's all there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there, and and congratulations again on the uh, on the nuptials. Uh, Thank you. Yep, we're uh, we're excited. Uh, we're less than a week away, so that's exciting. Well, we're gonna close the uh, we're gonna close out the hour with one more uh, studio track from uh, Cameron. Uh, this is called "What Makes It Great." Um, any anything we should know about this before we uh, before we play it? Um, no. So so I wrote it. Um, so I wrote it uh, all the way back in uh, it was 2017, and. Um, Everybody in, in 2016, there were a lot of musicians writing protest songs with the line, we don't need to be made great. And I gave myself a challenge to use that line, but to not be specific. Okay. Because Bob Dylan, when he wrote protest songs, was not specific. Anyone could use them for anything. That's true. You I, know, the time, blowing yeah. in the wind was not specific. Times they are changing was not specific as to what the senators or congressmen were for or against. It was just general. Yeah, you're right. And I, so I haven't thought of it I, that way. So yeah. I gave myself that challenge. I said, can I write a song with that phrase in it and not make it specific? Yeah. And it was about an old car I used to own that got up to 295,000 miles, and it got traded in for it. Oh, my God. And the car out there just hit over 200,000 miles and wow. still running. I've been very, very lucky with cars. What kind of car is it? I'm curious now. Uh, so the car out there is a Nissan Versa. Okay. And then the car in the song was a 2012 Hyundai Sonata. No kidding. Wow. All right. Well, very good. So we will close with this. This is uh, called What Makes It Great, the great uh, Cameron Sutphin. And we'll have to have you back again oh, in the future. Oh, thank you so this much. Was, this was really wonderful. And uh, check this out. And if you are listening live on Saturday, there is plenty more to come. But uh, What Makes It Great, Cameron Sutphin. Got this car, 
2012 Hyundai Bumpers missing Headlights out but it runs the same The windshield's cracked But it still drives It's not what you see that makes it shine But it used on Broadway Almost a year ago to the day It's traveled 50,000 miles since then It's ready to travel them again You don't need that flash and shine You just need something to get you by Keep your details, your chrome and the flames It's what's underneath that makes it great Some men are rich, and they'll let you know When all this leaves, put on a show But I know the things men keep inside Late at night they turn out the lights You don't need that flash and shine You just need something to get you by Keep the details, your chrome and flames It's what's underneath that makes it great It ain't fast, it's rusted through it doesn't shine, it doesn't look new But I don't need something fresh off the lot I'll stick with what I got You don't need that flash and shine You just need something to get you by Keep detail your chrome and flames It's what's underneath that makes it great It's what you do, not what you say It's what's underneath that makes it great